Okay, let's talk about something important. I know the first thing someone's going to notice is uh, I changed the background. A couple Australians complained. They said, Oh, you grotty little wanker! Change that ugly background you got! Uh, I got like 15 backdrops, so I thought uh, I'd uh, stop the uh, Aussies from down under uh, complaining about my background. One uh, Aussie said, Oi, your background's got a shit stain on it, mate! Hey, you think it's ugly! Change it, you knob polisher! <laughs> oh, damn. Picky people. Um, let's talk about micro contrast versus resolution. Um, you know how, like, uh, uh, hey, governor! What's that, mate? It's wine! Uh, you could give, like, a fine wine or, like, a really cheap uh, $9 wine from Walgreens to somebody without any claws. And they'll both say, it tastes like wine. Each one of them will get me drunk. That's uh, kind of the issue that you <laughs> the issue that you and most people face when it comes to lenses. Because this is a video, um, my video, this video right here, that you should spread around people to watch. This is the first time I've ever said that. Um, I may throw it on a little bit, but it's actually important. I actually like content, you know? You can actually have like these really highly polished videos. Hello, greetings everybody! And they've got no content in them. It's like, wow, you know, the audio is real good and the video is real good and uh, everything's nice and polished and edited really well, but there's nothing in it! Um, I hope to put some nice uh, content in this video for you. Um, so far as determining lenses, I've said before, actually very early on, you know, someone says, Well, this lens is really good, mate. You know, I, I get good pictures out of it. It's like, well, what's your, uh, what's your spectrum of experience with lenses? Well, you know, I've got eight lenses, and I may be about on 12. That's about the max, really. And that's fine, but without a basis of comparison for what's good and what's crap, uh, the Walgreens wine... Tastes like good wine to uh, someone without a refined palate. Um, obviously, wine is wine. Each one will get you drunk. Uh, this is photography. Uh, things happen there where you actually need to try to elevate yourself. Uh, the other old saying about cream rising to the top and elevating yourself. Yeah, okay. Micro contrast versus resolution. Or specifically... You know, what we're talking about, a resolution versus contrast, also acutants. Um, here's a perfect example. Most popular video on YouTube, uh, Taylor Swift's uh, video called Blank Space. Yeah, I know it's a ditzy little teenager video. Um, it's about a crazy girl and a guy she's dating, and she's, uh, you know, she's, she's crazy. <clears throat> As are all teenage women, of course. Um, <laughs> Oh, you can't say that, you sexist pig! Yeah, well, it's the truth. A truism, which is a generalization, but it's also a, a truism for a reason. Um, anyway, the movie is filmed with a red dragon, which I don't know if you know what a red dragon is, but uh, it is insanely expensive. Now, only one of two possibilities happens since I don't know the lens they use. It's most probably the downsampling that they did, because I think it was filmed in 6,000. Uh, it was a film with a 6K and 6K, and then it was downsampled, and it was a 360 rig, so they had multiple uh, Red Dragons. Red is the company. They make these insanely expensive uh, vid cams. And so it was filmed with a Red Dragon, model, model being the Dragon. Uh, it was probably downsampled, which uh, often kills the micro contrast while keeping the resolution. I'd like you to go see the most popular, well, not the most popular, the most watched video on YouTube, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's called uh, Taylor Swift. Now, I'm getting into lenses here. I'm not talking about her stupid video, okay? Hold on with, hold on, bear with me a second. Um, someone's going to say, you drone on too much, mate. Get to the bloody point. Okay, I'm going to get to the point. Um... <laughs> this movie is flat as hell. It is as flat as her chest is, okay? Now, this movie is as flat as Taylor... Well, I better not say that because there are a lot of Taylor Swift fans. Yeah, she's a beautiful girl, obviously, and I'm an ugly, bald SOB. My point is that the video is really fat, flat. It looks like somebody stuck a milky film over the entire video. Now, you can bring it up to 1080p and watch it on YouTube. And there's an interactive iPad experience where you can actually do 360-degree views with your finger because it was filmed with multiple red dragons. 
Very high resolution, but very, very bad contrast. The whole thing, if you actually watch her, like uh, in the scene where she's riding a horse next to her, uh, her uh, dreamy boyfriend, um, about 200 yards behind her, there is absolutely no separation at all. This is what I'm actually talking about in perceived depth. There's two types of depth in photography and videography. There's perceived depth, which is micro contrast, and there's rendered depth that actually has to do with the geometry and nature of the lens and how the image is rendered vis-a-vis -vis, you know, a good rendering of the light or very, very poor deconstructive rendering of the light, especially lenses that have a lot of glass in them. Which is a bone of contention. People want to argue with me on that, but I'll, I'll destroy you every time if you want to debate that perceptual depth versus render depth. I mean, I'll destroy you every time. But this video right here that I'm talking about is uh, distinguishing out resolution from contrast. So uh, another possibility, however, I don't think that's it, is uh, the lenses. Uh, they could have uh, it could have been a really uh, poor lens with very very high resolution. It does have a look. It's exactly the same sort of look you get out of a Sigma art lens, which I absolutely hate. Um, but when it comes to art, if that's the compositional quality you want to go for, that's fine. A dreamy, sort of low contrast, milky, yet sharp uh, image. Um, now, the easiest way for you to remember it, and uh, this is why people say, How sharp's that lens? You know, I talk about a lens, you know. Well, they say, Is it sharp? Is it sharp? <whistles> is it sharp? Is it sharp? It's like, that's all people know. Is it sharp? You know, is that lens sharp? Is it sharp? <whistles> oh, oh my god, you know, there's more to a lens uh, than what could be seen at your resolution or IQ. I talk about it in so far as what could be seen, i.e. resolution, versus what can be separated, i.e. contrast. Their resolution is what people call IQ or sharpness uh, conventionally, but this is only one lens attribute, and certainly most, uh, as is the case, not the most important, because lenses have many attributes, and they're always more than the sum of, your, of their parts. You can look up uh, MTF charts all you want, it's only going to tell you about that much about what a lens does. You can look like the 180mm 2.8 prime Nikkor and look at the MTF chart and go, eh, it's not really that impressive. Um, you know, it's good, but that lens is the bomb diggity. I mean, it's just the, ca it's the, it's the super tits. I've got six of those damn lenses because that lens has rendering qualities that are magical. Um, so you're not going to get everything by looking at the specs or an MTF chart. You can get a certain amount of information, of course. Contrast is one thing. Um, contrast is uh, specifically uh, talking here in this video about uh, micro-contrast, or perceived depth, i.e. the intertonal transmission. Um, contrast is also expressed as acutance, described how quickly an image uh, information uh, transitions at an edge. Instead of like this, where you have a poor micro contrast, you actually have like this. So here we have good micro contrast, really good edge definition between tonal values. Here we have very poor. It could be very high resolution, but very poor contrast. This is the same reason why you could take a low resolution shot and make it look seemingly like a high resolution shot in post by boom, bumping up the contrast. But it's not a high resolution. You've actually uh, rendered it differently in post. Um, and Photoshop or Lightroom, whatever you use, but contrast is, like I said, is also expressed in acutance. Good color saturation is also mistaken for micro contrast because uh, great contrast uh, always looks uh, very uh, saturated. Contrast specifically in denotation is a state of being strikingly different to one thing from something else, typically something in juxtaposition or in close association. Um, i.e. the differentiation, the tonal gradation. Gradation is denotatively contrast. Um, this is really, really important, especially if you're going to render anything in a black and white, especially beautiful black and white portraits. If your lens has shit micro contrast, uh, I know um, some of the post-processing tools will actually let you do a little bit of magic, but if you can't actually capture it with the lens at the time the shot's taken, there, you're, you really can't get that, you know, pop value. I'm talking about Zeiss pop, but I'm also talking about rendered black and white shots. Get that black and white pop value. Can't be added in post. You can't do some things, but not a whole lot. So, uh, micro contrast is the ability of the lens to differentiate between smaller and smaller details of more and more nearly similar, similar tonal value. This is also referred to as micro contrast. For example, the better micro contrast lens it has. And this has nothing to do with the light and dark ranges of the distributions of the tunnels of the final print of the slide. But it means the ability to take uh, two small areas of slightly different uh, luminance and distinguish the boundary um, from one another. Uh, there's a neat little book you ought to get. 
and it gives you some picture examples. It's called uh, Cannon's uh, book. It's called uh, Lens Work. There's a picture in there of a pussy cat, and it shows a uh, uh, good resolution, bad contrast, good resolution and good contrast, uh, good contrast and bad resolution, and it shows you the difference. Uh, Sigma art lenses, for example, have good resolution. That is, if they built them right to begin with, but they have really poor construction values and standards and quality control. But they have really good resolution, but very poor contrast. And I, I really beg you to see this, uh, you know, most uh, watched video on YouTube, uh, Taylor Swift's blank page, and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's no separation. It looks like every millisecond of the video is just washed with a fine layer of bleach and just all, you know... It, it, there's no separation. I mean, she looks like she's on the exact planar level as, a, as a, you know, the, the wall 20 yards behind her. And even when she's riding on the horse, I mean, everything is just, I mean, everything that had any depth when it was filmed went just like this. And I'm certain that this was, and since it was filmed on a Red Dragon, which is just insanely expensive, it was a 360 degree rig, like I said, it was due to downsampling. It was filmed in 6K and it was downsampled, uh, I think, to 4K. And then, of course, edited. And that killed off the micro contrast. I, it could have been the lens, but I don't know what uh, video lenses they were using. It very, very well could have been the lenses. Um, uh, famous lenses for a really bad micro contrast or all the Sigma series. Really, really high element count lenses. One of my favorite lenses, but it's due to speed and accuracy and its resolution, but not its micro contrast, is like the Tamron 70 to 2.8 VC. Very fast, very sharp, um, but the micro contrast isn't there. Um, you don't have that uh, perceived depth in the lens. The color saturation is not really, really good. That's why, while a lot slower, the 80 to 200 2.8 the D series autofocus Nikkor is uh, so much better. So take a look at that video. And like I said, the easiest way to think about it is talking about uh, what could be seen, i.e., uh, the resolution, what is rendered, what you call sharpness or IQ versus what could be separated, okay? Poor separation, good separation. You have intertonal value that is actually captured and rendered that uh, leads to perceptual depth. Like I said, there's two different types of depth, perceptual depth and rendered depth. I'm not talking about rendered depth in any part of this specific video that I'm making right now. So and this micro contrast, like I said, is expressed as accutance, which describes how quickly uh, in image information transitions at an edge. So um, when you have higher micro contrast, uh, there's, there's a lot of confusions. People, just like someone that doesn't know what the hell a good wine is, and I don't drink, but I do know a good wine from a bad wine, they'll think that uh, good micro contrast means good resolution, and that's not the case. I could take a really shitty, you know, 4 megapixel camera and make it look sharp as hell in post, but, you know, it's got bad resolution. I just artificially bump up the contrast, and so not the micro contrast, but the actual contrast of the shot to make it look sharp, and of course it's not sharp at all, so. There's seen versus separated, okay? What you see is what can be rendered, i.e. the sharpness, and uh, what can be separated uh, is that micro contrast. And the two of those together, when you have a really good resolution and really good micro contrast, i.e. seen and separation, uh, then you've got a really good lens. But there are also, of course, additional attributes. So anyway, Take that into consideration when you talk about lenses. It's not just about resolution. It's about micro contrast. Okay? Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.